What's up everyone welcome back to the Black History Month reviews and we got another one here for you and this is one I've been wanting to talk about for quite a while, Soul Food. This is a 1997 comedy drama, drama written by George Tillman Jr. and directed by him in his major studio debuts. And you have a hell of a cast in this movie. You got Vanessa L. Williams, Vivica A. Fox, Neil Long, Michael Beach, Makai Pfeiffer, Jeffrey Sams, Irma P. Hall, Brendan Hammond, and Gina Rivera. So, that is, of course, the movie that we're going to be talking about. And this has always been one of my favorite black movies of all time. Not only because it's a story about that has food in it, but it's a, really a movie that centers on a black American family with a tradition and dealing with problems. And this movie was a big deal back in the 90s because the, this was based on George Tillman Jr.'s own family because I've listened to the commentary for this a few times. And this movie was widely beloved, widely acclaimed for presenting a more positive images of black American people that we typically see in Hollywood movies. Because usually when you get these type of black movies, you usually see them going through hurt, struggle, or being slaves, or be just being sidelined. But back in 1997, this was the movie that put us black people into a positive manner and we had a few other movies since this that's put us into a positive black manner and shows that there's more to the black community than just her in slavery you can have a big family with tradition you can be in action you can be comedy you can do whatever genre you want and let's talk about how i feel about this classic film because this is a passionate movie I've been waiting for so long to talk about. Follow, of course, Ahmad Simmons as this movie is being told through his eyes with this massive family of the Simmons Joseph family, of course, as the main matriarch of the film, Big Mama or Mama Joe, falls into a coma during the operation to amputate her leg. And so what happens is this goes through a whole test and trial situation. Ahmad watches his mom and his aunts struggle to adjust to the family matriarch's absence, fall into rivalries, share memories, and also we also have a little bit of a family affair with a cousin and Terry's husband. So that's pretty much the plot of the nutshell when it comes to this very good movie. And so with that being said, let's talk about why this movie holds a special place in my heart. Starting off with the positives, this movie is the, just along the story side. George Tillman Jr., writer and director, this was his first big movie, and I have to say, for his first big movie, he did a great job in terms of what he's doing here. This is a very personal story for him that, in his words, it took 400 pages in one of his initial scripts to put everything into his essence so he could tell his story. But as he kept writing scripts, he kept truncating it down so that way to make it more tangible for a movie. And this movie is really well done in this. If you, first off, you have some really great tradition into this movie. It's a very good story about tradition with the family and coming over for dinners and such. Also, it has very nice and important messages about family dynamics, about being together with your family, even in times of need. I definitely really enjoy that type of story. I definitely really enjoy that. I also really enjoy what this movie has to offer in terms of what this movie is showing you, because it's portraying the black community in a positive way throughout the good times and the bad times, as they are being held together by these family traditions. And it does a great job at balancing the family traditional moments and some of the moments of comedy in this movie with some very good emotional dramatic moments. 
whether it's moments like you're having scenes of these characters having to deal with personal struggles like you have one aunt trying to get her convicted husband Lim a job you also have Terry and Miles of course and how they're drifting apart because he wants to pursue his music full time and she's not very supportive and she wants him to be a lawyer and then you also have the whole plot with Vivica Fox and Jeffrey Sams as they are basically doing pretty much just fine and they just had a new baby and how things are doing for them and also you also have to deal with the rivalry when it comes to Terry and Maxine played by yours truly the lovely Vanessa L. Williams aka the Daniela Melchior of the 90s and the always lovely Vivica A. Fox try to keep up these two when it comes to the moments where they have to be on the pretty tension side I think they do a very good job in terms of the performances in terms of what they can give in terms of what they can bring into the acting I think they both do a really good job into how their acting is in this I will also say there is some great writing and directing in terms of those moments but also the dinner scenes here and I also appreciate the explanation of why this rivalry started between Terry and Miles. I was, as a kid, this was an R-rated movie, so I had no business watching this movie as much as I did. But at the time, I was too young to understand what was going on in terms of that. But by the, and the more times you watch this movie, you think that Terry is kind of the asshole of the family. But the more times you watch the movie, and the more times you look, watch, see this movie, you try and make you feel another way about Terry because she's clearly misunderstood. And there's a lot of moments in this movie, especially one infamous scene that everyone loves to do, especially on TikTok, and loves to talk about in the comes to the anniversary of, of Maxine and Kenny, which was Terry's initial flame. You're basically seeing her being justified because one, she's having to pretty much pay for everything herself. Having her first love stolen from him, which is the who then goes on to be the husband of Maxine. And also having to deal with the family cousin and her husband and getting into a little bit of an entanglement affair. Spoiler alert, this movie has been out for 26 years this year. So, you pretty much have to see that there. But I will say for that, it does a really good job in terms of this story and the pacing. This movie is also a very well edited film. With only one issue here that brings the pacing down. 114 minutes, it doesn't feel like it. It's very fast paced here. I do think the score of the movie is iconic by Wendy Melvoy and Lisa Coleman. And the score is not your traditional big bombastic London Symphony Orchestra type. It's very personal, very methodical, and very emotionally poignant. And that's the thing I do appreciate when it comes to a movie like this. Also, what really stands out in this movie, of course, you have a banging soundtrack from the 90s. You have the classic theme, of course, A Song for Mama by Boys to Man. You also have Drew Hill, Earth, Wind and Fire. You have Total, Outkast, Monica, Tony Tone Tone, and then you have Usher. All the way up to Milestone, which they do have a little cameo appearance by themselves in the, in the show scene with Miles and Milestone singing I Care About You, which has always been a very beautiful song, I think. And also, I definitely do enjoy in the cameo by them, but also Malik Yoba, who will later go on to play Gavin in this. So there's so much great things when it comes to this that is very well done and is very well acted. And just, but all of that, it would none of that would make this movie as nearly as good. You could have a great soundtrack, you could have a great direction, but if you don't execute it right with the best performances you know how, then what does their your movie have to offer? The acting in this movie is very strong. There is a lot of incredible acting in this movie. Everyone does a great job in here. As many times as I rewatch this movie. 
this is a very well acted flick and is very is very well acted first off i will say everyone does a very strong job first you have vanessa williams which back in the 90s and such she was pretty much like i said the 90s version of the yellow melchior because if you look just in the eyes you can definitely see that she does have that Daniela Melchior look to her but I do think that she is is great in this movie as Terry as I said older when I was younger I was too young to understand but now the more times I rewatch this movie Terry you understand that she was being done wrong by most of the family and nobody ever acknowledges all that she has done for them. All they do is just gaslight her to thinking she's unlikable. And I think for the most part, Terry, she did deserve better. She's kind of my favorite character in this entire movie. I also really think that Vivica Fox, she does great in this as Maxine. She's also one of the most likable characters here, and Vivica A. Fox just has that screen presence to her that she still does. She doesn't do a lot of movies as such nowadays, aside from direct to TV stuff and stuff like Sharknado, but I definitely do enjoy a lot of her, what she has to give in her performance. And also, Nia Long as Bird, I thought she was good. Again, her character arc she's having to go through is great. I also like Michael Beach as Miles. For a character that you understand his simple situation, which I'm kind of mixed on him, but I do think overall that was actually really good. And everyone else did a really good job in this too. Whether it's Makai Pfeiffer as Lim, you have Emma P. Hall for the screen time she has as Mother Jo, Gina Rivera as Cousin Faith. But my favorite character of this entire movie has always been Ahmad. Since you're, you're seeing this movie play through his eyes, he is the narrator. He is the one who is pretty much telling us a lot of what's going on in this family. You're basically seen, watching the family fall apart through his eyes. There is one moment in the last couple minutes of this movie when he literally is just basically breaking down and crying. Because he does not, because he makes up a lie just to get the family tradition back together. And that scene has always stuck out to me as one of the best scenes in the movie. So, everyone on the acting side does great. Even some of the supporting characters like Samuel and such, who is just despicable as all hell. In the case of Ahmad, yes, he is the eyes and ears of this movie. He is likable. He can be a little nosy at times, but... He is a boy that he doesn't want to see his family fall apart and he's willing to do anything to stop it. Which he does do the last request from Mama Jo. Cinematography and the production design in this movie looks great. Especially with a lot of the food choices which if you're a food person you are gonna be just in awe of all the Sunday dinner food. It is very well, very well handled here. Some great looking shots in this movie, the shots of Chicago, whether it's the outside scenes or the scenes with the dinners or the scenes with each of these sisters and their individual lives, all of that is very well handled and is really well executed. So I definitely give that a lot of credibility in the world and it does a very good job in doing and talks about what you're getting into. And so for that, I definitely really quite enjoy that. I already touched on the music and such, so all of that is very, really good. And there is some good improvisation too, because of course they did do some improvising. You could tell where there's some moments where it's improvising, but I think it works in favor of the script and the dialogue. Because the director, he did say in the commentary, he did want the actors to improvise while being true to what was on the page. And I think they did that successfully. And a little fun fact before I go into this last negative. Originally, the, some of these actors were going to be played by people like Whitney Houston or even as Halle Berry. Halle Berry was actually going to play the part of Terry. 
but that didn't really follow through, of course, because, of course, she probably either wasn't happy with the script or she just did something else in between. So, that's a little bit of fun fact to you. Moving into the mix aspect is the only thing mixed in this is the whole affair between Miles and Cousin Faith. I totally understand a part of this, exactly. And you definitely get the moment of this where with Cousin Miles, why is there since he's not being supported a lot by his wife Terry and he wants to leave the law firm to make his stand and be his own man in terms of wanting to pursue his music full time and I totally understand a part of this, a lot. I understand his character's point of view. Unfortunately, in the mix side of things, this kind of overstays his welcome in the pacing, especially in the second half of the film where you do have the infamous betrayal that everyone likes to point out, is which is done very well with no music as such. And you see that both of these characters, especially he, has done wrong. So I definitely understand that part of it. It's just I feel like the pacing in it a little bit in the second half, especially a little bit in the first half, does kind of drag this movie's pacing down just a little bit. But luckily, the payback does come back in the end and in the infamous happy anniversary scene. So it definitely does earn a spot in terms of the film. This is the issues of this. One of those is a small criticism. One of them is a big criticism. I'm going to start off with the small complaint. And as I said, as many times I've rewatched this growing up, this is not a movie that is very rewatchable because you are dealing with the subject matter of the main matriarch being in the hospital and dealing with some personal tragedy in terms of that side. So some people will be a little you no know, depressed from this and they'll be a little bit upset and heartbroken by the end of this movie. So you definitely have to know what you're getting yourself into in terms of that, of course. The biggest negative I have when it comes to this movie, which is the only negative is I cannot stand the betrayal of Miles in this movie. Now, again, as I said, I understand his point of view. He's not feeling supported. But this is a situation that easily did not need to happen. There is a way I feel like Terry could have supported him, but I get it. Because the minute because of Faith comes into the movie and enters Terry and Miles' home, you know something is going to go down in this. Unfortunately, that happens. That is the biggest issue. Is I hate the betrayal. I hate the way the Miles betrays his own wife. Because he's not feeling supported. There are moments where they could have went to a counselor or something. I know this is the 90s something. But I feel like this could he could have easily avoided that. Also, the family just overlooked and gaslighted the emotions that Terry was going through, which I felt could have been more looked at rather than overlooked thinking is just rage by this family. Mostly. In the end, guys, Soul Food is a classic example of its... It makes its marks into film and into the black history, the black entertainment filmmaking side of things. It's an amazing example with black positivity in this family despite the troubles that family always got you. With great characters, there are some great writing, there's some strong themes in here, there are some very well handled messages, and it is a well directed story that definitely gets this point across despite the few small issues when it comes to the husband and the portrayal of the husband following for the cousin, which is a big no-no in the family. This is a really great film, but just take into account that this is not going to be a movie you're going to want to watch every single day. But whenever I do get the chance to re-watch it, I just enjoy the story and I enjoy the message of black positivity, despite the tests and trials this family goes through in this movie. Whoa.
Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. If you want to see more, my channel icon is up here. If you want to see more content from me, all my social media is right here in this end card. I will also leave a playlist and a video here for you to see what the channel is about. As always, acknowledge me, stay epitastic, join the epitastinists, and you guys keep it cool.